Today, let us tell you about an underrated vitamin that's crucial for both managing diabetes and kidney health. And the relationship between diabetes and kidney health is much closer than you might think. In fact, according to the CDC, one in three diabetes patients already have kidney disease or will develop kidney disease sooner or later. Even more shockingly, according to the National Kidney Foundation, diabetes is the leading cause of kidney disease and is responsible for about 44% of all cases of kidney disease. High blood pressure is the second major cause of CKD, with one in five high blood pressure patients having chronic kidney disease, according to the CDC. But what if we told you that this miracle vitamin can stop diabetes and restore your kidney health in just two months? That might sound too good to be true, but let's have a brief look at the role of diabetes and high blood sugar in kidney damage so that you can understand why this vitamin is so important for kidney health. Diabetes is a condition in which you might end up having too low or too high blood sugar. If your blood sugar goes too low, you might notice symptoms like dizziness or lightheadedness, trembling hands and body, and muscle weakness, all of which can be life-threatening sometimes. On the other hand, high blood sugar is like a slow poison, as it can gradually damage your blood vessels, your nerves, the retina in your eyes, your brain, and especially your kidneys. For the record, high blood sugar isn't just a potential problem for diabetics, but can also be a problem for those who consume refined carbs and sugars frequently. We'll tell you about that too, so stay with us. In diabetics, high blood sugar can happen due to two reasons. First, when someone's own immune system damages their own pancreas, affecting or completely eliminating their ability to produce insulin. This condition is known as type 1 diabetes. Second, when someone starts developing insulin resistance, meaning their body's cells refuse to accept insulin signal and don't allow the glucose to enter. This can happen in prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes can also develop when the pancreas cannot produce enough insulin or doesn't produce insulin at all. There's another rare condition called gestational diabetes that can affect pregnant women. It can be temporary, but can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes in women if not addressed or treated. Gestational diabetes can develop due to hormonal changes in pregnant women or insulin resistance in pregnant women who are already overweight or obese. By the way, the vitamin we'll tell you about can be very effective in managing all these types of diabetes. So now the question is, what causes insulin resistance and what makes prediabetes progress to full-blown type 2 diabetes? The answer lies in high intake of refined carbs and sugars, obesity, and a family history of type 2 diabetes. Diabetes usually affects people older than 40 years, but it's becoming very common in younger people too especially the ones who are obese or have a BMI more than 25. It appears that what's primarily contributing to obesity is a high intake of refined carbs and sugars, especially sodas, colas, and other sugary drinks. Pasta, pizzas, burgers, fried chips, processed snacks, and several others. All such foods and drinks tend to increase blood sugar levels, and when that happens, our body releases insulin to direct the cells to utilize the energy from sugar. The rest of it is either stored as fats or flushed out by the kidneys. Stored fats contribute to weight gain, and the amount of sugar that passes through the kidneys can severely damage kidneys, particularly if you already have diabetes or if your blood sugar levels are consistently high. As for insulin resistance, it happens when your body keeps releasing insulin in response to your blood sugar levels. So, with consistently high blood sugar and consistently high insulin levels, your cells might gradually stop responding to insulin and hence, insulin resistance. In other words, insulin resistance not only speeds up fat accumulation in the liver and abdomen, but also makes it difficult for you to burn or lose extra body fat, mainly by affecting sugar metabolism. But why are we telling you all that? Because the miracle vitamin we're talking about has a very important role to play in sugar metabolism and other aspects of diabetes that need to be managed to preserve kidney function. This vitamin is known as vitamin B1 or thiamine. So, 
How does this vitamin help your body fight diabetes and restore kidney health? Let's find out! Number 1. Thiamine deficiency is very common among diabetics. In fact, studies show that diabetics lose thiamine via urine at a much higher rate than healthy people. And during one study involving diabetes patients, experts observed that thiamine levels in them were about 75% lower than non-diabetics. Other studies suggest that diabetics need more thiamine than healthy people. We'll also talk about the recommended dosage of thiamine and how much thiamine you should take if you're diabetic. So stay with us. Number 2. Thiamine increases glucose metabolism. Studies show that thiamine increases the body's ability to break down and utilize blood sugar. In simple words, there's a process in which our cells convert sugar into small energy packets, called ATP. Diabetes and insulin resistance significantly affect this process, which in turn also reduces the overall energy available for the muscles to function, causing symptoms like fatigue and lightheadedness. So getting enough thiamine can not just improve the way your cells produce energy, but can also prevent energy-related symptoms from happening, like weakness, fatigue, and dizziness. Number 3. It improves insulin sensitivity. Studies show that regular thiamine intake can improve insulin sensitivity within as early as 6 weeks. And not just insulin sensitivity, benfotiamine, which is the lab-made version of thiamine, has been shown to reduce HbA1c levels within just 45 days. Some studies also show that thiamine deficiency might even reduce the ability of the pancreas to produce insulin. So getting enough thiamine might also improve insulin production by your pancreas. Number 4. Thiamine can help lower triglyceride levels in your blood. Now, that seems to be very impressive. If you have diabetes, your chances of having triglycerides in the blood are significantly higher than non-diabetics. Consistently high blood sugar levels can increase triglycerides in the blood, which then contributes to the development of atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, and heart disease. So high blood pressure, heart disease, and diabetes are closely interrelated, and all these conditions are the leading causes of chronic kidney disease. Taking enough thiamine can help prevent or even treat these conditions. Number 5. It can prevent many complications of diabetes. Consistently high blood sugar gradually damages almost everything it touches. It can damage blood vessel walls, reducing their flexibility and increasing blood pressure. It can damage your retina, causing gradual vision loss and sometimes even blindness in older people. High blood sugar can also damage the tiny nerve endings under the skin, causing neuropathy, which shows up in symptoms like pain, tingling, and burning sensations in the hands and feet. And not just those nerves, it can also damage the nerves inside the brain, increasing the risk of developing dementia and Alzheimer's. Moreover, high blood sugar can also damage tiny filtering units inside the kidneys, causing diabetic nephropathy. This is where thiamine comes in. It not only helps to regulate blood sugar, but also helps to prevent and even treat all the complications of diabetes that we've just told you about, including kidney damage due to high blood sugar. Thiamine itself acts as an antioxidant too, preventing oxidative damage and reducing inflammation in your body, especially the kind that might be damaging your kidneys. Here's another surprising fact. ARBs and ACE inhibitors that many heart patients use can gradually degrade kidney function. Thiamine can also help preserve kidney function in people taking those medications. Now let's learn about the dosage of thiamine. The recommended dosage of vitamin B1 or thiamine for healthy adults is 1.2 mg per day for men and 1.1 mg per day for women. However, for diabetics, higher doses ranging from 100 to 300 mg daily can be recommended. But since thiamine is water-soluble, our body tends to lose it with water via urine, so you might need a consistent supply of thiamine to maintain its levels in the body. Benfotiamine is the fat-soluble, lab-made version of vitamin B1. And this is the kind that's often recommended to manage many diabetes complications, like neuropathy and nephropathy that we told you about earlier. The recommended dosage of benfotiamine ranges from 150 to 600 milligrams per day, taken by mouth for up to six months. 
Talk to your healthcare expert for the most appropriate dosage based on your kidney function, average blood sugar levels, and overall health status. This is important to prevent overdosage and any interactions with medications you might be taking. Do remember that despite being effective, thiamine isn't a magic pill. So make sure that you're following your doctor's directions about all the dietary and lifestyle changes you need to do to manage your condition. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and check out these videos.